Hey class, um, I hope everybody's doing well. I hope everybody's staying safe, staying home, washing their hands. Um, this is the lecture for the Tuesday, March 24th class where we continue talking about movies. Um, wanted to say a few things before we get into it. Um, really gonna miss our in-person class. Uh, we had a really good dynamic there and I know this is uh, no way gonna make up for it, but I'll try my best. Um, show you guys funny clips and things like that. Um, remember a few weeks ago, I showed you guys the um, the meme and the thing that happened in Hong Kong where people were going crazy to buy toilet paper. Um, I wish I would have saw that happening here, which I didn't. We could have all warned each other and got all the toilet paper we needed. Um, hopefully, everybody has enough till they restock. If not, you can uh, find a lot of memes on what to do in the meantime. All right. So let me just share my screen here and start the lesson. So we have the media blog from Gabrielle. Um, the first thing we're going to talk, he's talking about is Christopher Nolan talking about movie theaters. As we'll see in this class, um, movie theaters are doing really bad. They, they're in the biggest decline and they're never going to bounce back. Well, who knows? Um, movies have gone straight to um, VOD, video on demand. Some people are pushing back films. Um, and Gabrielle says he wanted to see the new James Bond film. Um, you know, I've mentioned in class that I don't really go to the movie theaters, but I wanted to see the new Mulan film because that looks pretty cool. Um, and who knows, this could be the last stand for movie theaters. And Nolan makes an uh, argument that hopefully when people come out of their homes, they're going to go to the movie theaters. Um, I'm not a big fan of movie theaters, but I think I will go more often just how much I miss it, even though I didn't take advantage of it before. Um, I think there's a lot of things in, in life that I didn't take advantage of um, that definitely when we get back to normal, um, I will. Um, and then he has his meme here. Um, hold on, I'm gonna move this. His meme uh, deals with the sharp increase in the beloved Pepperidge Farm Chessman cookies. According to this, in Amazon, it's $71. So I hope you stocked up on the uh, cookies, um, especially these. And this is uh, from the movie, The Road. The book is one of the best books ever. So if you haven't read that, I'm looking for something to do. There you go. Um, the scene where he's uh, robbing somebody for supplies to live. Um, I guess it's a take on the world we live in. All right, thank you for the media blog. I want to show you two things that um, before we start the before I go into the lesson, um, New York Times put an article about a lot of memes that are false in the coronavirus era, um, and one of them I actually almost believed as well. Um, I don't know if any of you have seen this image, but basically it says that if you gargle salt water or water with vinegar, warm water with vinegar, you can prevent the coronavirus uh, moving into your system. It's not true. Um, it goes into your respiratory system, so it's not gonna be clogged in your lungs like this image. Um, there's a lot of other things like drinking water frequently, um, putting a hair dryer, breathing in the hot air. Um, and a lot of these things do help your immune system and keep you healthy throughout the year, such as vitamin C, um, getting some sun, um, taking iron, but they're not gonna cure the coronavirus. And this is dangerous. Why? What if I share this meme and one of my family members is really sick and decides to take hot air and drink a lot of orange juice and avoid going to the doctor at a deadly cost? So if you see somebody sharing things like this, I've seen a lot of them. I'm calling people out. I'm writing a comment, fake, do your research, please stop sharing this, and you should all do the same. Um, for the funny thing, I want to show you a guy in Cyprus was walking his dog via drone. Um, sorry for the music, kind of sucks. I don't know what this is. Um, yeah, so people are being very innovative and crazy and fun during this lockdown. Um, and I think it's very good that we have all these memes and, and funny videos to keep us sane during this crazy time. Yeah. Might not want to do that in New York City if you have a fancy dog, but if you live in the suburbs, you could probably get away with it. All right, let me get into present mode. Okay, so 
we're going to talk about the decline and rebirth of movies. And if those of you who don't know where the, this image is from, it's from the Netflix movie Bird Box. Why was that movie important? Well, that movie generated an article here that says 45 million views. But from my other class, I researched, um, and they said that it did 80 million views in the first three months. That's huge. Um, and sort of in the meme culture nowadays, we see these images and jokes about it and we kind of have to see the movie or else we're lost in the loop. I remember um, I was traveling overseas and I kept seeing these memes on Instagram from my friends and I was like, what is this? What is this from? And finally I figured it out. I tried to watch Bird Box and they didn't have it overseas. So I had to VPN it and I was finally caught up. And I think the movie was a lot of hype. It was an okay movie. Some parts were good, but it wasn't as good as all the hype around it, in my opinion. I don't know what you guys think. Um, but the streaming success shows where movies are going. So going back to the history of movies from where we last left off. In 1948, the Supreme Court uh, ruled that movie studios, movie studios had to divest from owning theaters. So if we look at 21st Century Fox, we look at MGM, Warner Brothers, when you would go to the movies in, in the 1940s, you would actually go to Warner Brothers movie theater. You would go to a Fox movie theater, an MGM movie theater. So at this time, a lot of foreign films were coming out. They were being very innovative. Um, just like Parasite 1, you know, all these movies are doing different things that people are following here. Um, so foreign films and TV hurt movie theaters and viewership. And TV was a big thing, as we're going to see. So Hollywood tried to ignore television. They denied access to the actors, the studios, directors, and the film libraries. Um, that didn't work. So as I remember when I was a kid, I used to always see The Wizard of Oz um, once a year on TV, some of the classic movies on TV, Indiana Jones and things like that. Um, so they couldn't hold on to it. And little by little, little TV chipped away at this. And they weakened Hollywood. I mean, Hollywood's always going to be a juggernaut, even if we don't have movie theaters. So the chipping away of Hollywood by TV also had another effect. It allowed independent producers to come in and make smaller movies that were more artistic. So by the early 1950s, big studios, as we know them, uh, they came to an end. They didn't have exclusive deals with actors and they didn't own the movie theaters. So big actors stopped doing deals with one studio and did deals per movie. It would be like The Rock would only work, uh, sorry, let's use somebody else. Tom Cruise would only work with Fox or who else? I don't know who else would, would work with another movie studio. And now they would just do deals per movie and they could command a higher price. Drive-ins, all right. Uh, has anybody been to a drive-in movie theater? There's one in New Jersey. I don't think there's any in Long Island. Um, never been to one. Um, write in the discussion if you have and what were your thoughts. So movie, movie viewership declined in the 50s and 60s with more people staying home to watch TV. Also at that time, more people were moving to the suburbs. They were buying more cars and gas was cheap, remember. Uh, after World War II, people were coming home. They were moving to the suburbs. Um, they had more money. Um, and they were looking for things to do. So the first movie, the first drive-in uh, was opened in 1933 in Camden, New Jersey. Um, and by 1958, a third of all theaters were drive-ins. That's insane, um, especially since you can hardly find one anymore. Um, kids were free. You could bring your own food and you didn't need to look for parking. You also didn't need a babysitter. If your kids are annoying you, put them in the back seat or as you'll see in the next slide, uh, the novelties. So to attract customers, drive-ins offered playgrounds, laundry mats, picnic areas, and miniature golf. So put your clothes in the laundry, go watch the movie, and that's it. Um, and they often showed two movies for one price. I remember my mom told me um, when she was a kid, she went to Puerto Rico in a, a drive-in theater, and they charged by car. So a lot of people snuck in the tr all, her and her cousins snuck in the trunk, and they paid a cheaper price. 
Um, and also, um, as we talked about the loud person um, in, in the theater who's, who's rowdy, you know, they're not gonna disrupt the movie. They're in the car, they hear their own sound. Um, and you should put a little box on your car and hear it, or you could tune into a radio station. So in this first clip, you're gonna see something about history of driving theaters. Back in the 50s and 60s, it was a part of Americana, the neighborhood drive-in theater. Pack up the family and catch a movie from the comfort of your own car, all for under two bucks. And once you were there, the screen would light up with a ton of classic messages how about a snack? We're happy to have you with us this evening and want you to enjoy every minute of your stay here. While you relax and stretch, visit our concession where you'll find something to please you. Or how about a new way to stay comfy on a cold night? Your attention, please. All new hotshot electric in-car heaters have been installed for your comfort and convenience. But don't get too comfy. <laughs> There's even a warning about what couples might do in the car. Hey. No PDA, all right? But as cars became smaller in the 80s and 90s, people avoided drive-ins, leading thousands of theaters all over the country abandoned. All right, um, I want you guys to watch Lignon. I'm not sure of the video quality, so I'm only going to show you a piece. Make sure you check that out. Um, so drive-in theaters, one of the biggest reasons why they failed was real estate cost. So if you own, think about if you own the land. Um, that land, that suburban land became more and more valuable. You're only making a certain amount um, per year selling movie tickets when you could demolish, well, you already have the flat land. You could just get rid of the screen and build apartments or homes and make way more money. Also, another interesting thing was that daylight saving times made daylight, daylight saving time uh, made the movies start later. So people didn't want to go see them. Um, and teenagers started going to malls at this time. Um, and then theaters were built into malls. We had the multiplex, which became the mega multiplex, which showed 15 to 20 movies. Um, you know, there's only a few theaters in on Long Island, and they all have these huge places, um, big, big lobbies, snack bars, um, and you can see like tons of movies. So movie theaters are always suffering, as we'll see in a few graphs, and looking for ways to attract people. And now we have all these new things. You have, you could go to a movie theater in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, that has a trendy bar, get a fancy cocktail. You can go to a movie theater where they'll serve you dinner at an obscene markup. Um, and they have this thing, the lay down bed. So I'm assuming in the coronavirus era, this is a bad idea. Um, even before that, for a germaphobe like myself, I don't know if they're washing sheets or whatever. I definitely do not want to go here, but a lot of people do. Um, and we can see in this graph the, the ticket uh, sales for North America. Um, they started to go up in the 2000s, and then they started to go down. Um, to the lowest level. Um, so it could bounce back up, right? Maybe once this ends, people will, be, will like to go to theaters um, and we'll see an incline or the death of them. And we won't know to a few months. By the end of the year, we'll figure out what's going on. Um, we'll not, the situation is going to take a few months, but with movie theaters. Um, and, and how many people, how many movie tickets people buy per year? It's just, the peak was in 1940s. People were buying, on average, 30 movie tickets a year. Um, and that's before TV became really popular. I mean, what is there to do? You can even watch TV. You could probably read a book. Um, so we're going to go to the movie theater maybe once or twice a week. Um, looks like three times a week, even. And it just slumped down after that. And it's never going to catch up. Another Other things that had an uh, adverse effect um, on movie theaters, but that allowed us to see different movies movies differently um, was in the late 1970s video players and videotapes came out it was very confusing when it first came out there was lots of formats formats that didn't work together um, so for example there was betamax and vhs 
Um, and if you bought a, a Betamax tape and you had a VHS player, it didn't work and vice versa. This was very confusing. People had different formats. Um, same thing with Laserdisc and DVD. Eventually VHS won. In 1977, the first movie rental place came about. And the most famous of all is of course, Blockbuster. Um, I hope that you guys have fond memories of Blockbuster. I want to show you the video here. If it loads. Okay. And again, that link will be available for you guys in another document so you can view it. There's one Blockbuster left in the US. And I don't think anybody's going to the last store to rent movies. I think it's just a novelty. One-on-one conversations with somebody who loves movies as much as they do. So what do you guys remember about Blockbuster? Um, I remember every Friday I would go with my dad and my brother. And I think if you rented two movies, um, they would give you one free. So we always get three movies for some reason. We would fight for candy at the front. We would always argue about which movies we were going to get. The really popular movies were never available. You had to come back and see it a week later. It was kind of too late. Um, and that's just another aspect of life that people younger than us are never going to have. So books were, were once difficult to have, as, as we saw in one of the earlier classes. But like movies, they just became a decoration. I mean, you can buy a book for 50 cents, a few dollars, if you go to Savers or even on Amazon. Um, and now it's more something to show at home. You know, you want to showcase your top books. Tons of books um, in boxes. Um, and I just keep the favorite ones on under my TV. Same thing, we showcase our favorite movies. Uh, ooh, typo there, sorry for that guys. Um, we would have the Disney collection or we would have DVDs. I mean, even wall units used to be built with a thing on the side to put your DVDs. New wall units don't even have that. Um, do you guys still show your favorite DVDs? Let me know in the, in the blog post on discussion board. Um, uh, do you guys still show your favorite DVDs on the side? Here's a meme, it's kind of blurry, sorry about that, but it says, uh, child, uh, mom, can we get Disney Plus? Mom, we got Disney Plus at home. I remember my cousins used to have the same setup on the side of their TV showing off all the movies. And sadly, why? Why would we show that off anymore? Show this off anymore when it's just in our phone, you know? So one of the reasons why movie theaters have declined is because people want to watch movies at home. It's convenient. It's cheap. How much, how much money do you spend when you go to the movies? Um, I'm talking about like the mall movie theater. Where I live in Sable, we have a small theater where the tickets are five dollars before uh 5 p.m and the snacks are cheap but if you go to a regular movie theater you're spending at least you know in manhattan or or in the mall you're spending at least uh, 14 dollars each ticket the snacks are like another 30. um and if they have even more extended snacks it's going to cost you even more you could cook a whole meal at home for the same price you can talk you know if you're somebody who always gets lost in movies the movie theater is not for you can eat your own food you can watch what you want um, movie theaters only have a limited selection at home you have an endless selection even on netflix you have tons of crappy movies you have a few good ones but there's way more selection than you would have in a theater you don't have to get dressed you can stay in your pajamas if you're in your room you can wear whatever <laughs> um, and it's so much easier than going to the movies the actual movie theater And viewership has revolved around this. 
we have movie night at home, friends and family coming over for a movie. Okay, my friend will bring the beer. Another friend will, will make dip and uh, another friend would uh, bring wings or whatever. We have Netflix and chill, a whole popular culture term. Um, if you don't know, hopefully you just Google it and what it really means um, is built around dating and dating aspect of modern dating is based around supposedly um, watching Netflix movies. Uh, we have pirated fire sticks. People are paying, I think, upwards of $100 a month to watch the newest movies to get the pirates, the, fire, the Amazon Fire Sticks hacked. And then you have bootleg movies. There was a huge industry in bootleg movies. Um, people on the train, people in your barbershop, people in the Chinese, your local Chinese restaurant, somebody that you knew um, that would sell you the newest movies just so you can avoid um, everything about the movie theater, um, the cheap price. Um, and bootleg movies are something that just disappeared um, with the streaming era. We don't need, excuse me, guys. Um, we don't need bootleg movies anymore. Um, and remember, sometimes you would get a bootleg movie. You would see the guy get up and walk across the screen, or people laughing. I remember people throwing up popcorn and things like that. Um, even worse, <laughs> you would get a blank movie, which I think happened to my grandfather a few times. So people still like going to movies just for bigger event type uh, movies like Marvels and Star Wars, like Marvel movies and Star Wars. I think I only went to the movie theater once last year and it was just to see Star Wars. Um, and you can get that experience at home. Uh, you can get the ambiance uh, going to a movie theater, people clapping, um, people gasping, people uh, saying jokes, people dressing up as 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 Iron Man and Thor and Spider-Man to go see the, the new movies. And Avengers is so big, guys. Next Marvel movie, get in on this. Um, get some money. I don't know if you remember this, but people were reselling the Avengers Endgame tickets because you could pre-buy pre, pre -buy them, um, pre-sale online and reserve them. People were dying to see how this was going to end. Um, who was going to die? You know, they teased it a lot. And people were getting over $2,000 for a $15 or $20 movie ticket. So the next, uh, whatever the next Marvel thing is, like Endgame, get in on it. So I'm going to miss movie theaters, right? Um, as they close, I don't know if you guys, do you guys recall a movie theater from your childhood that closed down? This is the Whitestone Cinemas in the Bronx. I used to go here all the time as a kid. Um, I used to go with my family, running around, begging to play the arcade games. And it's closed down. It's closed down now, and they're going to demolish it and make a mall. I remember when I was a kid, we all went on Easter Sunday to go see The Passion of the Christ. I don't know if you guys know that movie. Mel Gibson uh, plays, um, or the movie was produced by Mel Gibson about Jesus' last moments. It was a big movie. And we went to the theater, all my family, my cousins, we were young. And there was a fight in the theater because somebody was smoking weed in the theater. And the person behind them said, hey, don't you smoke weed? I got my kids here, blah, blah, blah. Um, and there was a fight. They had to stop the movie because of it. So as we lose theaters, we lose little things like this, little anecdotal parts of our life that just won't be there anymore. Has anybody ever got caught sneaking into a movie um, and got kicked out? Uh, let me know in the discussion. So movies have never died and movies will never die. Even if all the movie theaters close, movies are still gonna exist, especially thanks to streaming. Um, we have streaming services like Netflix and there's more movies than ever. They're winning Academy Awards. So Roma, um, Steven Spielberg was against having a streaming movie Win an Academy Award because he saw the threat. Um, again, we have Bird Box here. How big that was, and it's going to get even bigger. We saw with Martin Scorsese and The Irishman, they paid Netflix paid over 150 million dollars for the rights to that movie um, because they were trying to attract the audience that would go to the theater. Um, and I don't know if it paid off. I know it had tons of streams. I was very disappointed in the movie. It was too long and not good enough for me. Other ways to watch movies, Redbox. You guys know what Redbox is? Um, you ever go to 7-Eleven and see that 
actual big red box, or I think they have them in Walmart. What you do is you swipe your debit or credit card, you rent a movie for $2 a day, um, and it's probably movies that are not on cable yet, or movies, they're in between like cable and HBO, um, and you can watch them. Um, I remember when this first, you gotta be very careful, I don't know if this, this has happened to anybody, when this first came out years ago, my cousin rented a movie. Um, we saw the movie, bam. And then like, she forgot to return it. And it, it was like a month later. So she had to pay like, um, this was like when it was like three or $5 a day. It was a new movie. She had to wind up, she wound up paying like over a hundred dollars. She could have bought the movie a few times over and we were just dying laughing. Another thing is movie pass. Um, does anybody have movie pass in the class or know anybody that had movie pass? So basically what you do is you pay a one-time fee. Um, and I think it's $20 a month. It might be 30 and you can see as many movies as you want. Um, sounds like a good idea, right? It actually is a good idea. If you love movies, this is a bargain. The bad thing is movie pass is bankrupt. They didn't have a successful business model. Think about it. One movie ticket costs you upwards of $10. So if you're paying 20, or even 30 a month to watch, unlimited movies, once you see two movies, you're already getting your money back. Um, and I think they're about to stop that service or they're trying to fix it to make it generate income. Well, I'm not too sure. So there's some hope in movie theaters. Well, we'll there was some hope. Um, last year, um, there was a record 42.5 billion in the global box office receipts, 2019. Um, it was the highest ever, but I have to look at the, the, the number with a skeptical eye. Here's a few reasons. They're charging more and more for tickets. The, if you're going to go see Star Wars, I had no choice but to see it in IMAX. I don't care for IMAX. And the IMAX that was in the movie was not even worth it, but I had to pay an extra $2. That was the only screening for me. Um, a lot of big movies came out last year. You had Marvel Endgame. You had Star Wars. You had, um, I forgot the other, what the other one was. And there's a more global demand. They're increasing these, they're, they're trying to attract audiences over, all, all over the world. Unfortunately, what we're seeing with the coronavirus, they're just shut down. Nobody's going to go see them. And even when things start picking up again, guys, it took China two months from the start of January to now that they're starting to lift restrictions. So we got it at least two months to go. And at least, and... I'm still go, I'm still gonna be worried. Worry, it's still gonna be worrisome to me to go to the movie theaters right away. I'm gonna go back maybe when they have a vaccine. Who knows? But um, that was an interesting link that the student had posted. It is gonna be an interesting time for movies, movie theaters. And it's easier than ever to make your own movie. This is another thing, right? Think about and I tell you guys this, especially you'll see in Mass Twelve. Think about if you wanted to be a movie producer back, like years ago or make your own short film. Um, it's hard. Um, one, of the, one of the good examples of this is the Netflix series Hent Hentified, one of my favorite series. Very good. I recommend that to you guys. They started as a YouTube clip. Um, and Netflix saw that and bought into it and produced a full, a full life series. So you could put that out fairly cheaply. You could get a, a camera. Um, you could even do it on your phone. You could do this edit on your MacBook. Um, you know, you can even download these programs illegally. I'm not advising you to do that. That comes under serious risk. But that's how people are getting things done nowadays. And you have your cell phone, your, your phone. Every new phone that comes out makes the quality look better and better. You could shoot some very good video on iPhone, uh, whatever number they're on. I don't know. Um, Pixel 4 has an incredible camera. And we use these video clips not only for movies, we use them to post funny things, memes, the guy walking his dog on the drone, or even to stand up for um, misgivings or bad things in the world, such as police abuse. And the lastly, um, pop culture. Um, movies have given us a lot of pop culture references. When Star Wars came out, even to today, there's always the Luke, I am your father reference. There's the whole thing with Thanos and his hand, and you can buy the, the toy with the Infinity Stones and all the memes and all the snapping and all, you know, whatever. Scarface, the movie. Scarface, very good movie. But it's been super influ influential to rappers. That whole rags to riches story, 
using drugs that a lot of rappers associate with. Um, they use the Scarface in a lot of lyrics, artwork, clothes. I remember I had a Scarface poster when I was in middle school. Why? I don't know. It was a cool thing to do. Um, and one interesting thing that I found out from Bambi. I'm just going to pull up this link here. So after the movie Bambi came out in 1942, um, deer hunting was cut in half. So people saw a cute um, cartoonish deer and associated with, oh, you know, let's, let's not go hunting as much. Um, there was another crazy thing. When Jaws came out, uh, tourism dropped in seaside resorts because people were scared. That's insane. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for this lecture. I'm going to start, uh, stop sharing um, here. Um, guys, for next week, you're going to choose one of the movies that you can watch. Um, that's already in discussion board. I really wanted to watch Goonies with you guys, and I know that it sucks that we can't. And I tried to find Goonies for you on a streaming service. I just could not. Um, and I know many of you have Netflix, and I gave you the Amazon Prime option. Um, yeah, so and I could not stream Goonies for you here like this because then I could get sued for copyright. And although I really want you guys to see the Goonies, I was not willing to um, take that risk. All right, I'm um, looking forward to seeing your discussions and responses in the journal.